today is November 15 and I just saw the banner for the Goodreads Choice Awards opening round is open. So we are going to see the nominees together. Oh, okay, it's only 27. Final round is until 29th December 4 and then winners announced on December 8th which is my birthday. I feel like they did it like that last year as well. Anyway, let's continue. So these are the two things that I've read that are on the Goodreads nominee shelves. I hope this is not the only two. Let's start with fiction. Oh, I have heard so many things about Cleopatra and Frankenstein. Not so many good things about To Paradise. Notes on Execution is very much a hyped book that I read for my reading three hyped books video. You can check it out up above. But essentially, I did not enjoy it. Oh, this just came out recently and it is already nominated. Interesting. Oh my god, wait, why are so many of the hyped books in this category? Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow is also in this category. Okay, I'm gonna read. I'm definitely gonna read this one. This time tomorrow, I read it as well. Where did I read this? I'll link the vlog up above. So, I feel like for this category, I only want to read Cleopatra and Frankenstein and Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. Not sure if the Celeste Ng one I'll um, be interested. Next category, mystery thriller. Oh, this is so exciting. Oh my god, the maid, the night shift, the book of cold cases. I don't think I read Daisy Darker. Oh my god, the Paris apartment is such a no, like please no. The overnight guest. Have I read this? Oh I haven't read this. That's interesting. But it's not me. I feel like I saw this cover before. A flicker in the dark. Oh my god, okay, okay, so many things. Out of the ones that I've read, right? The Night Shift. Ah, I read this book, what? I gave it four stars. I gave the Book of Code Cases three. Let me, I think I gave about three or so. Oh my god, why is this not updated? Anyway, oh my god, there's so many I want to read in this category also. For now, I'm interested in like the It Girl, Daisy Darker, Killers of a Certain Age, Things We Do in the Dark, A Flicker in the Dark. Oh my god. The Paris Apartment better not win. I know this is a popularity contest, but please, oh my god, please, it better not win. Oh my god, I'm gonna be so angry if it wins. Okay, I also need to be smart about this because even though I may want to read certain books, if they don't have as high ratings, they probably won't get into the second round just because not a lot of people would vote for it, in a sense. Let's move on first to historical fiction. It's a genre that I don't really read anymore. Oh, but I have heard so many good things about lessons in chemistry. I think I'll be reading that. Oh, I DNF this one. Peach Blossom Spring. <laughs> I kept wanting to read it, but I couldn't bring myself to like actually start it. I am not interested in this book. Okay, I think for this, I'm just gonna read Lessons in Chemistry and either vote for it or not. I don't think I will want to get to this one. I'm just not in the mood for that. Fantasy. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Okay. Oh, oh. Okay, okay. This just came out. It came out this month. Oh my god, this one was so. <gasps> Oh my god, Legends and Lattes. Oh my god, wait, why is this category so hard? <gasps> oh my god, The Book Eaters. This one is hyped also. Oh, I feel like this one might win. Crescent City number 2. When Women Are Dragons. Legends and Lattes. Oh, this one is the last book in the series. Atlas 6. I guess it's the republished version. Nether and Bone, I don't think I gave it very high. Babel, I haven't read. Oh, everything from here. I've only read Daughter of the Moon Goddess. Which I think I gave 4.5 or 4.25. Oh my gosh, I don't know. Oh, I feel like reading this though. Oh my god. Okay, I definitely cannot get to this because I haven't even read the first book. Oh my god, JLA though. This category is so difficult. Romance. I'm super excited for romance. Oh my god. Oh, I knew Love on the Brain is gonna be here. Okay, part of your book came out this year. That Wait, what? <laughs> I read it so long ago. What did I give? Oh, three stars. So IDNF, Dating Dr. Deal, I couldn't stand it. Terms and Conditions. Ooh, I feel like reading this one. Oh my god, it starts with us though. It's here. Electric Idol, Book Lovers. Oh my god, I really enjoyed this one. 437k. Okay, I wouldn't be mad at all if this one. You love on the brain. <laughs> I haven't rated it. Oh my god. Okay, I gave this 4.25, I think. The Bodyguard gave three. Reminders of him is this year. Oh my god, 580k. Maybe Maybe I should read this one. I'm more interested in this one than it starts with us. And every summer after also. Things we never got over 202k. 
Oh my god. Okay, I think I'm going to prioritize the ones with higher ratings. We shall decide later. Science fiction. Oh, I, I DNF to Sea of Tranquility. The daughter of Dr. Morrell is sci-fi. I didn't know that. How high we go in the dark also? Hmm, I DNF this one as well. Upgrade I wanted to read but I wasn't in the mood for it. The measure is sci-fi. Feels like this one is gonna win. Horror! Oh my god, okay. Hacienda is horror. Interesting. Sandal. We spread. Oh, Juniper and Thorn, I've read. House of Hunger. What moves the dead? The violence. Just like. <gasps> the Cherry Robbers is horror? I literally have this book. I literally have it. It's right here. Okay, I'm definitely reading that one then. I have no interest in reading humor, but I'm just gonna see it anyway. Okay, moving on. Non-fiction. Yeah, there's nothing I'm interested in here. I'm more interested in the memoir and autobiography. I'm glad my mom died better be in here. This year, I'm just gonna vote for... I'm glad my mom died. You can watch me vote it now. Yes, done. <laughs> there wasn't any other memoirs that I was interested in. History and biography, I don't think there will be any. Graphic novels and comics. Oh my god, I feel like reading Chef's Kiss, Squire, Crumbs, if I can find, Oddball, Fangirl Volunteer is out already, I didn't know that. Who the F are you? Oh my god, so many. Poetry, I don't think I'm interested in any. Debut novel, A Measure, okay. A Flicker in the Dark, okay. Daughter of the Moon Goddess, oh my god. Cleopatra and Frankenstein, Every Summer After. Lessons is Camp. This, this one also, oh my god, why are all the categories so tough this year? Oh my god, I really cannot, I really cannot, oh my god. Is this the graphic novel? I am confused. Oh, I DNF this one. I DNF this one. I'm interested in the Rachel Lynn Solomon one. The Weight of Blood. <gasps> as long as the lemon trees grow, oh my god, wait. Oh no, but it's only 2k. I've heard so many good things about it. Young adult fantasy and sci-fi. Oh, blood marked. If you could see the sun. The girl who fell... <gasps> Oh, Magic City Poison is nominated? What? Oh my god. Oh, it's only 9.7k. No. Oh my god, this Woven Kingdom also. Oh my god. Bella Dot. Why are all the categories so difficult to vote for this year? What the? Oh my god, Foul Lady Fortune also. I have no idea what I'm gonna read. We shall see. I'll come back again. Let me like reconvene and gather my thoughts. So... <laughs> I don't even know how much of that chaos from the previous clip I will keep in while editing but I have since calmed down and slowly curated a list of books from each category that I would want to read but no promises on whether or not I'll get to all of them because time is really tight and there are also a lot of other books that I have to read as well but I have already voted for a few categories for the Opening round. So starting off with romance, I voted for Love on the Brain by Ali Hazelwood because I gave that 4.5 stars. In comparison, I think I gave Book Lovers 4.25 stars. The next category that I voted for was Young Adult Fantasy, which I voted for A Magic Steeped in Poison because do I even have to explain? Just look at my book over there. <laughs> I'll link the blog up above where I read it. I gave it 4.75 stars. The last I think it's the last, the last category that I voted for was Memoir and Autobiography which I voted for I'm Glad My Mom Died which I again have a video up for it linked up above for you if you want to watch it it's really so good the book I mean <laughs> Yeah, I think that's all the ones that I voted for. But this is just the opening round. My votes may change for the final round, I believe, depending on which books I get through in this video. So so this is the list that I did on Notion. <laughs> it's super simple. It's just a list of books that I would like to read for all the different categories. And I put the genres, whether or not it will be in the final round will be determined a few days later, number of ratings, and whether or not I read it in 2022. So from these books, I feel like I should get to the ones with higher ratings first because as we all know, this is a popularity contest more than a, an accurate representation of which books are good or not. So if I'm going by which books I think will make it to the final round, I have to read the books with higher ratings first. So I have some physical copies over here, one of which, which I already had and I showed it to you. The other three I managed to get from the library. So the first one is Our Missing Hearts by Celeste Ng. This was nominated for the fiction category and it got 17,862 votes. 
12-year-old Bert Gardner lives a quiet existence with his loving but broken father, a former linguist who now shelves books in Harvard's library. He knows not to ask too many questions, stand out too much, stray too far. For a decade, their lives have been governed by laws written to preserve American culture in the wake of years of economic instability and violence. To keep the peace and restore prosperity, the authorities are now allowed to relocate children of dissidents, especially those of Asian origin, and libraries have been forced to remove books seen as unpatriotic, including the work of Bert's mother, Margaret, a Chinese-American poet who left the family when he was nine years old. Bert has grown up disavowing his mother and her poems. He doesn't know her work or what happened to her and he knows he shouldn't wonder. But when he receives a mysterious letter containing only a cryptic drawing, he is drawn into a quest to find her. His journey will take him through the many folk tales she poured into his head as a child, through the ranks of an underground network of librarians, into the lives of the children who have been taken, and finally to New York, where a new act of defiance may be the beginning of much needed change. I have tried to read Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng, but I didn't have it because I really wasn't like feeling much for it and so I'm not sure whether or not I enjoyed this but I borrowed it anyway. The next one is The Hacienda. So this is nominated for horror as well as debut novel. As of when I jot it down it has 19,475 weeks. During the overthrow of the Mexican government, Beatrice's father was executed and her home destroyed. When handsome Don Rodolfo proposes, Beatrice ignores the rumours surrounding his first wife's sudden demise, choosing instead to seize the security that his estate in the countryside provides. She will have her own home again no matter the cost. But Hacienda San Isidro is not the sanctuary she imagined. When Rodolfo returns to work in the capital, visions and voices invade Beatrice's sleep. The weight of invisible eyes follows her every move. Rodolfo's sister, scoffs at Beatrice's fears, but why does she refuse to enter the house at night? Why does she cook, burn, copal incense at the edge of the kitchen and mark the doorway with strange symbols? What really happened to the first Dona Solorzano? I'm so sorry that I don't know how to pronounce all the names. Beatrice only knows two things for certain. Something is wrong with the hacienda and no one there will save her. Desperate for help, she clings to the young priest Padre Andres as an ally. No ordinary priest and Andres will have to rely on his skills as a witch to battle the malevolent presence haunting the hacienda. Far from a refuge, San Isidro may be Beatrice's tomb. So I've heard a lot of people reviewing this. I think mostly they have enjoyed it, not too sure, but I'm excited to read it for myself and see what I think about it. Okay, this one is the book that I already have, The Cherry Robbers by Sarah Walker. This is also nominated in horror. Thanks to Time Streets for sending me a review copy. This one got 2,541 ratings, so realistically, I should read The Hacienda first, then Cherry Robbers if I have time. New Mexico 2017, Sylvia Wren is one of the most important American artists of the past century. Known as a recluse, she avoids all public appearances. There's a reason, she's living under an assumed identity, having outrun a tragic past. But when a hungry journalist starts chasing her story, she's confronted with whom she once was, Iris Chapel. Connecticut 1950, Iris Chapel is the second youngest of six sisters, all heiresses to a firearms fortune. They've grown up cloistered in a palatial Victorian house, mostly neglected by their distant father and troubled mother, who believes that their house is haunted by the victims of chapel weapons. Girls long to escape, and for most of them, the only way out is marriage. But not long after the first chapel sister walks down the aisle, she dies of mysterious causes. A tragedy that repeats with the second, leaving the rest to navigate the wreckage to heart-wrenching consequences. Ultimately, Iris flees the devastation of her family, and so begins the story of Sylvia Wren. But can she outrun the family curse forever? Somebody on Bookstagram recommended me to read this as well, so hopefully it's good. And the last book that I got from the library is The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea by XEO. This was nominated in YA Fantasy and Sci-Fi and it got 24,551 votes. Deadly storms have ravaged Mina's homeland for generations. Her people believe the sea god, once their protector, now curses them. Each year, a beautiful maiden is sacrificed to the sea in her hopes of appeasing him. Many believe that Shim Chung, the most beautiful girl in the village and the beloved of Mina's older brother, Jun, may be the one to finally end the suffering. But on the night Chung is to be sacrificed, June follows her out to sea knowing that to interfere is a death sentence. To save her brother, Mina throws herself into the water in Cheong's stead. Swept away to the spirit of realm, Mina seeks out the sea god, only to find him caught in an enchanted sleep. With the help of a mysterious young man and a motley crew of demons and spirits, Mina sets out to wake the sea god and bring an end to the killer storms once and for all. But a human cannot live long in the land of the spirits, and there are those who would do anything to keep the sea god from waking. Hopefully, even though it's YA, I'll still enjoy it because I found that recently I haven't been enjoying much YA so I've been gravitating towards adult more. So those are for the physical copies. As for 
ebook copies, I am currently reading Colleen Hoover's Reminders of Him, which is nominated in the romance category. It has like 580,000 votes or something like that. After serving five years in prison for a tragic mistake, Kenna Rowan returns to the town where it all went wrong, hoping to reunite with her four year old daughter. But the bridges Kenna burned are proving impossible to rebuild. Everyone in her daughter's life is determined to shut Kenna out, no matter how hard she works to prove herself. The only person who hasn't closed the door on her completely is Ledger Ward, a local bar owner and one of the few remaining links to Kenna's daughter. But if anyone were to discover how Ledger is slowly becoming an important part of Kenna's life, both would risk losing the trust of everyone important to them. The two form a connection despite the pressure surrounding them, but as their romance grows, so does the risk. Kenna must find a way to absolve the mistakes of her past in order to build a future out of hope and healing. So that's the book that I'm currently reading. I'm not very far in, like maybe 2% in or something like that. I'm at page 40 out of 640 and today I just placed a hold for a few books, audiobooks. So I placed a hold for The Measure which is nominated in the sci-fi category, Hidden Pictures which is nominated in the horror category, just these two actually. <laughs> so we shall see. I also placed the holds for three of the books that I have physically for the audiobook. I really don't know what I'll be reading in this vlog because even though I have the books here, I may or may not get to them in time and they might be eliminated already so then I wouldn't have the, like there's no point in reading them currently. So we shall see and I guess I'll update when I have more thoughts. Several days later. The final round is out everybody. So let's react to it together. <laughs> this is the final round. Let's start with fiction. I already see some books are there. Oh, okay, okay. So we are left with 10 books. Notes on an execution is still here. Our uh, missing hearts is still here. Cleopatra and Frankenstein. Ah, uh, this one, the one that I did not read. <laughs> tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow is still here. The only book from here that I would like to read is Our Missing Hearts. I borrowed it from the library. Uh, actually, tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow is most likely going to win this. So I should probably be reading that one. But I am planning to buddy read this book with my friend in December so I'm just not gonna maybe I won't even read out Missing Hearts we shall see this video is kind of a fail so far Mystery and Thriller Killers of a Certain Age The It Girl oh my god why is the Paris apartment still here oh my god 231 okay, I'm gonna be so angry if it wins it looks like it's gonna win <sighs> okay I feel like I might end up just skipping this category <laughs> Historical Fiction Lessons in Chemistry is still here Oh, but Carrie Soto is back is also still here. I hope Lessons in Chemistry wins, then I'll read it for the winner's video. Fantasy, Babel is still here. <laughs> the GLA book is still here. The Sarah J Mass book is still here. I feel like I'll end up skipping this category as well because I think these two have a higher chance of winning based on the number of ratings. Romance, okay, I'm quite excited for this category. Oh my god, Love on the Brain is still here. I'm currently reading Reminders of Him still. Science Fiction... Oh, I'm also currently reading The Measure, which I have yet to tell you. Okay, for now, I think Sea of Tranquility is going to win horror. Oh, I borrowed The Hacienda. Okay, I'll see how. Because I rated Juniper and Thorn 4 stars, I might vote for this one. If I don't manage to read any of the books here, because 4 stars is still a good rating. But I would like to read The Hacienda and Hidden Pictures. I'm gonna skip over... Okay, let's go to non-fiction. Oh, I think it's memoir and autobiography. I can straight away vote for I'm Glad My Mom Died. Graphic novels. I think Heartstopper is going to win this one. Debut novel. Skipping over poetry. Ah, lessons in chemistry. Every summer after a flicker in the dark. Okay, these are the three books that I'm interested in reading for this category, but I, I don't know if I'll get to it in time. Okay, YA fiction. There is nothing that I want to read from here, so we are not going to get to this category. YA fantasy and sci-fi. The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea is still here. Again, we shall see. If I don't get to The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea, I'll vote for This Woven Kingdom. Let's just look at middle grade and children, just for the sake of it. Yeah, there's nothing that I want to read from here. Okay. That's the end of this reaction. <laughs> Goodbye. Several days later. Hi. So <laughs> this is going to be a very sad news. But I think I mentioned that I started reading Reminders of Him the other days. And I have decided to DNF the book because okay, let me let you know where I am at first. I DNF'd at 36% so not super far into the book but because this 
video is based on a certain time frame and I know that where I am at in the book, I'm really not feeling much inclined to continue reading. So since I'm not in the mood and I don't think I'm gonna give it a high rating because of that, so like why not just stop here? I don't know, it doesn't really feel like a romance to me much at the moment. I did see reviews where people said that it got more focused on the romance, more towards the middle or like past 200 pages or something like that. Since the start was already so not so good for me, I decided to just not continue through with it. And I know people have been giving this super high ratings and stuff. But I don't know man, I previously read Verity and Confess and I think all your perfects and I thought those were quite good but this one I don't even feel inclined to finish maybe it's just me since this book is so highly rated right but yeah I'm just gonna stop here and again people's opinions are subjective okay on to the next book I'm reading The Measure for the sci-fi category I'm finding that quite interesting actually I'm listening to the audiobook Basically, this book is about one day, everybody in the world above 22 years old receives a box with a string inside it. The string is the answer to the exact number of years you will live. Okay, so nobody knows where these boxes came from, who gave out these boxes, so on and so forth and whether or not it's true but over some time it eventually gets scientifically be proven true the society itself is trying to decide what to do with this new information of you knowing how long you will live and it's just really interesting because it's like a really intriguing premise that really triggers people to start thinking about whether or not this thing should be kept confidential to the individual whether or not it should be released for everybody to know like what profession requires people to expose how many years they have left to live and things like that and it's really like another layer of how when you have this thing there is also cause for prejudice and discrimination similar to how people are currently being judged for their skin color for their race for their gender and things like that and it's just like wow really thought provoking is what i'm trying to say i am currently at 41 percent into the book this book revolves around eight people if i'm not wrong it's just about how their lives and how they have been impacted by this box and this string that's all i have to say at the moment so i really don't think i will be able to get to a lot of books but we shall try <laughs> hopefully and yeah I'll update you when I have more updates hi it is voice over Elise back again because I forgot to say something as usual so I am not going to be reading any other books from the romance category because I don't think any other book is gonna win to be honest because based on the ratings reminders of him is very likely to win it has 600,000 ratings which is like so much higher than any of the other books nominated currently book lovers might that have a chance it has 455,000 but I am going to stick to my original vote which is Love on the Brain which only has 138,000 ratings because out of all the books in this category and the ones that I've read which is Love on the Brain the Book Lovers and IDNF Reminders of Him right I enjoyed Love on the Brain a bit more than Book Lovers so actually it's gonna be my vote for it I'm not gonna try to think about this from a strategic point of view and with that I have concluded the romance category maybe i'll do a 10 book reading vlog okay not 10 since i already have like maybe a 7 book reading vlog just to see for myself but we shall see and yeah that's it basically goodbye hi so we are in the final stretch of this video because the final round is ending in one day and five hours and i just finished one book which is the measure by nikki ehrlich in the end i gave it 3.75 stars because i thought that it was a very interesting discussion as i mentioned previously it was really intriguing to follow all these different people and see how at some point in time their lives may intersect a little bit and how their actions affect one another there's also romance in this there's also family themes friendship themes basically in life in general because of how these strings affect all your relationships and all these like discussions on how interactions should be done in the future basically i don't really want to spoil anything but i I really liked how the book ended there was one certain point that i wasn't expecting to happen but i guess i should have seen it 
coming. I grew to like most of the characters actually, but this book can be a little bit confusing because there's so many different perspectives of all these different people that we're following. But I'm really glad that I stuck to the end and I didn't DNF halfway or anything like that. Because it's a book that I would recommend people to read, I think I'm gonna vote for that for the sci-fi category, which is so interesting because I wasn't expecting to vote for the category at all because I thought I may not like this book that much in the end, but I really did quite enjoy it. So yeah, that's the sci-fi category down. I just started reading Hidden Pictures, which is nominated in the horror category, reading the ebook and listening to the audiobook. I am like a little bit into The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea, which is nominated for YA Fantasy. And <laughs> There's just a lot of reading to be done today. So hopefully we can get this done so that this video wouldn't be a complete fail. Yeah, let's do this. Three hours later. Okay, time check. It is the same day. According to the Goodreads page, there are 21 hours left before the final round closes. But because I'm going to be working tomorrow, I think I can only read until the end of today. It's currently my time 6.47pm. I foresee myself going to sleep at like 12am so about less than 6 hours left. I just finished Hidden Pictures so I haven't told you what this book is about. So basically this kind of reminds me of a different book which I'll talk about in a different video but okay let me tell you what this book is about okay. So this one is about this woman she is called Mallory. She just came out of rehab because of her drug addiction and she's trying to get a job and she ends up getting this job as a nanny to help take care of this young boy. The parents who are called Ted and Carolyn Maxwell and the son is called Teddy. The son is 5 years old. So she is a live-in nanny, she lives in their pool house, she starts to have regular income and she's finally like starting to become better because at that moment she was about 18 months clean I think. She bonds with Teddy who is a sweet shy boy who likes to draw on his sketchbook. So his drawings used to be about trees, rabbits, balloons until one day they start to get more and more sinister. So for example, there will be like a man in a forest dragging a woman's lifeless body. I really liked that this book had the actual drawings which is why there is the illustrator mentioned as well. It helps make the story so much more interesting because it's kind of like mixed media and I also recommend listening to the audiobook as well because the audiobook will actually narrate out like what each picture is depicting. So it's not like the audiobook will not have that added element of the drawings. There's something more sinister going on which I don't really want to spoil too much about but it's just these is so interesting and there is like a little bit of a romance in here as well and there's just this mystery it's a bit scary at times and it's a bit thrilling at times it kept me really engaged and i was trying to read this by today right and i really found myself wanting to keep going like i didn't feel like oh i'm, I'm like too tired i mean i stopped reading because the story was so intriguing as for the twist i haven't even told you my rating i gave it 4.25 stars in the end so i quite enjoyed it it's a really good rating i didn't give it full five because of the twist i'm gonna talk about spoilers so there will be spoilers for this book so basically why i didn't give it the full five was because one there was this twist that was kind of out of nowhere and i found it a little bit like hard to believe as well because it's like how could this nanny who is Mallory like not know about this you know having like spent so much time there basically I'm trying not to spoil everything and then another thing that I was like quite bothered by was that this okay Mallory has her backstory right and her backstory is that she actually got into an accident and that car accident resulted in her sister being killed in the accident she blames herself but at the same time in the car there was also her sister's friend who is called Chen Guang and the friend was described by Mallory as being super weird and like having been very eccentric and it's just like why must that friend that is described as being weird have an Asian sounding name like that's that's just my issue with it because it's like this whole book I don't think there were any Asian characters I don't think so but I may be wrong and then out of nowhere the friend is Asian but the friend is described as being super weird so it's like it just rubbed me off the wrong way a little bit yeah so it's just like the twist and then at the end it became more of like oh we would have gotten away with it if not for you that kind of thing and it became like a very telling kind of story in the end because <laughs> the review was just revealed to us like that it's not really shown to us in a sense. Yeah, and I thought it would have been more interesting if because the title is Hidden Pictures, right? I thought there would be something like hidden in the pictures that would like review everything, like the final twist or something like that. But I don't 
think that was but it's just like minor things i overall did really enjoy the book and the lead up to everything was quite good just that the twist itself some parts were a little bit like really you know like you're playing with this that kind of thing but okay since i gave it 4.25 i will proceed and vote for hidden pictures because i don't think i have time to get to the hacienda because they're both in the same category and hidden pictures has more ratings than the hacienda anyway so i'm gonna vote for that one because 4.25 is a good rating I think I'll try and get through The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea and see whether I can finish it. I, I doubt so, but we will try. If not, I will update you accordingly as well. Okay, so as promised, I am here to close out the vlog and so I am very very proud of myself because I finished The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea by XCO. Trigger warnings for child death and death of parents. Oh my god, I think I finished it in like 2 hours around there. Thankfully, it was a very fast-paced story and I really enjoyed the yearning in this. Oh my god. Okay, as I was reading it, I gasped twice. So the first one was... We might be spoilers, so let me just put a spoiler warning. The first one was when Shin claimed that Nina was his wife instead of the sea god's wife. And the second was when he said that he didn't have a soul. I really don't read YA nowadays anymore because I tend to gravitate more towards like adult things now. Mostly because I just feel like the voice of the narration feels a little bit young at times. Okay, while well, I felt that from the girl who fell beneath the sea, the story was compelling enough with the mythology. I think it's Korean mythology. The plot and the romance that I just really felt compelled to keep reading and not want to put it down at all. I have been motivated by the impending deadline of this video. In the end, I haven't really decided yet but I'm contemplating between 4.25 and 4.5 stars because it was really good until one certain part at the end it was like a little bit confusing but it's kind of also a little bit predictable. I just didn't know like the exact details maybe because I was rushing but also it just didn't like wow me until I wanted to give it 5 stars at the end. Not to say that 4.25 5.5 is a bad rating. I mean it's already a very high rating. I just wanted to explain why I didn't give it the full five the plot went in a very good direction i didn't really know what was going to happen and at first i was a little bit like oh my god what's happening like what's going to happen why are we even here but then things progressed it was really interesting to go on the ride please admire how beautiful this cover is i find it quite relieved that for the first time i think or maybe not the first time it's just the first time that i can remember the reads are progressively getting better as the video goes on what a pleasant surprise and if if I were younger, I feel like this would definitely have been a 5 star. Which goes to say that I will vote for this category for The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea. I have now been introduced to XEO because I also have to read her XOXO in this month as well. And for a standalone Korean mythology, Asian representation is so so good and yeah i can see why it has been nominated please do read this book it's highly recommended i hope you enjoy it if you do pick it up <laughs> yeah I, I have nothing else to say other than i really enjoyed this <laughs> something that i can finish in two hours okay before i end i wanted to say that for our missing hearts which was nominated for fiction i managed to listen to 13 percent of the book which is about page 45 45 pages into this book which means unfortunately i will not be able to complete this book for this video and i will not be able to vote for the fiction category but it's fine we shall see what wins and then whether or not this will be the book that wins and i can continue reading if not i might just soft dnf this because it hasn't really been grabbing my attention so far to the point where i would feel like i have to like finish reading this book i also dnf'd little fires everywhere so it might just be that celeste ng is not an author that's for me because i know that other people have enjoyed her works very much so just wanted to update that i did start a bit of this but we are super early on in the story that i don't really have much thoughts to say with that i've come to the end of this video i can't believe i finished three books in one day attempted to read four the bulk of this video was done today thankfully this wasn't a fail so that this video can still go up i hope the reading the winners video won't come out a year later like last year as always it was a very fun reading experience that brings me to the end of this video video please like this video if you liked it consider subscribing to this channel if you would like to see more of such videos i hope you're having a great day or a great week whenever wherever you're watching this remember to hydrate yourselves and yeah i'll see you in my next video 
I think this is going up during bookmas. So happy bookmas, everybody. This is voiceover Elise coming over back again. <laughs> I hope this doesn't become a staple in any, all my videos but I wanted to explain why I decided to vote for The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea over this Woven Kingdom because both are nominated for YA, Fantasy and Sci-Fi. I gave this Woven Kingdom 4.25 stars and I'm contemplating between 4.25 and 4.5 for The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea. I didn't really have a favorite character when I was reading this Woven Kingdom but in comparison when I was reading The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea, I really enjoyed the cast of characters, the world and even the plot and so I also really liked the romance in The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea much more than This Woven Kingdom because This Woven Kingdom was more of insta love. Okay so there's already that portion and for me I always prefer when I like the characters in a book more. So in The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea, I really liked Namgi, I really liked Shin, I really liked Mina, I really liked Kirin. So many characters and I also really liked Tai for example. So yeah, I just overall preferred The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea more but I don't think I was explaining it really well. That's why I decided to come over and give a voice of explanation. But yeah, that's all from me.